Hey everyone, today we're looking at the paper Language Model Prior for Low Resource Neural Machine Translation by a bunch of authors from the University of Edinburgh. This paper is about neural machine translation and in particular about and uh, proposing it proposes a new way to integrate a pre-trained language model into the neural machine translation during training and this seems to be particularly relevant for low resource languages and um, so the new approach seems to outperform previous methods for integrating a language model and uh, in particular the way it differs from them is that um, the language model prior the method which they call is only integrated in the machine in the neural machine translation during training but not during the inference as many of the previous methods have done before so let's look at how this works in more detail so as you may be aware neural machine translation tries to learn a probability distribution of the most likely translation y given an input x and this could be for example um, when doing translation from German to English you're trying to find the most likely translation in English given the given a German sentence and the way this is decomposed is um, autoregressively and it's depicted in this equation if we focus on this for a second so the probability of a translation model um, for the, for the next token of the translation model y of t is computed um, given, given the probability of all the previous tokens that were produced before so all the tokens before t and also conditioned on the input x in German in our case so in this case the probability distribution for the translation model is actually uh, relying on having access to a large amount of parallel data of sentences in German X and in English Y which can be decomposed and then can be used for training as so so however this although we may have some sentences from German to English for example quite often we don't have a lot of sentences for many languages um, other than uh, the most popular languages or the, the languages with the highest population let's say However, what we have is a lot of raw data available on the internet and um, what you can do with this raw data, for example, on all articles on Wikipedia is you can train language model on that because a language model actually models the probability distribution for the next token, YFT, given all the previous tokens from the article but without conditioning on anything else. So with a language model, you can actually um, you don't need to rely on parallel data you, you can just train this on the raw data and some previous work in machine translation actually I think this has been quite a lot of work on this has been thinking about okay since it's very useful to train this model and you can you can do it without any supervision how can you integrate such a language model into the neural machine translation process to improve the translation performance because intuitively this model is going to be learning some useful general knowledge about the structure of language which might be useful, um, might be helpful for the machine translation and for example, and this might be particularly relevant when translating some um, less, less frequent words for which you only have, let's say, only a few or maybe even no example translations but you may have a lot of examples in raw articles which then the language model will be able to learn and this knowledge would be good to, to transfer this knowledge into the translation model so previous approaches to, um, to integrating a pre-trained language model into neural machine translation have predominantly focused on doing this during the inference time um, there have been some works also during the training time as well but uh, a popular approach has been to do something like a log linear interpolation basically the probability of your next token to be predicted in English y of t 
will be composed as a sum of the probabilities computed by the translation model and the language model weighted by some hyperparameter beta. This hyperparameter beta is going to weight what amount of influence you would like to have from the translation model or from the language model. And this beta will be tuned on some validation data and then you need to use both models. During the inference process you need to load both of those and you need to, uh, to compute those probabilities and sum them up. There have been a few other approaches. Also, I think I have read some papers where they are um, trying to fine-tune those two models um, jointly. However, in this particular paper, they are proposing a new approach which seems to be working a little bit better than what has been proposed previously, um, which is called language model prior. Crucially for this paper, they are actually not integrating language model during inference, but they are integrating it during training. They're using language model, they're freezing the language model, actually they're not uh, updating the hyperparameters of the language model, but they are only using it to influence the training process of the translation model. So typically the translation here, um, this is the loss of the neural machine translation setup, is um, so you decompose in terms of the, um, you sum over all the sequence locations from T to N, and you do the negative log likelihood of the translation model. So um, what they do in this paper is they add a new, par new parameter to this loss, which is computing the KL divergence um, between the probability distribution for the next token computed by the language model, pre-trained language model, and the probability distribution computed by the translation model. And this is also weighted by a hyperparameter lambda here. So intuitively doing this could act as a regularization and it might shift your, um, your signal, shifts your signal for training this translation model perhaps to, towards um, making those probability distributions a little bit more like the um, distribution produced by the language model. And actually it turns out this might be um, beneficial for neural machine translation. So if we look at this figure here, where you have um, an illustration of the how the probability distribution over the next token might look like. So each of those bars could be the probability of producing a next token in a translation. And um, if you train actually a standard translation model, what you're going to see is it seems that it will be like pretty focused. Um, it will, it's going to prefer with very high likelihood only one of the tokens in this probability distribution. So, for example, uh, it's tough to think of a translation example, but let's say the, the target sentence is the food is good, and then let's say this is the probability mass for good. So this will have a very high uh, probability mass in the default model. And um, if you integrate the language model prior during training, you're going to end up having a more smoother distribution, which will be more evenly distributed over words in your vocabulary. And this might be beneficial uh, because it um, regularizes a little bit not to, to have the model so focused on particular words, but also having some uh, focus on words that may be a little bit, let's say you have less examples for those words in your data set, still have some probability mass, mass over those. And um, yeah, this is how this works. And actually another approach against which the authors compare in this paper is label smoothing, which um, instead of using such a language model prior, which is a little bit more in intelligent, let's call it, label smoothing is just um, shifting some of the probability mass of the highest token to the um, or the, high, the couple of highest ranking tokens to all the other tokens in the vocabulary kind of evenly or I don't remember if there was some, some weighted distribution. But basically the idea is similar. You're going to try to um, balance this distribution a little bit. But with language model prior you're doing it a little bit more intelligently because language model is actually has learned something meaningful about your um, your sequences. So
so um, this should be a little bit more more uh, informative. So this is the basic idea of this paper. They also actually introduced some hyperparameter tau, which is controlling the smoothness um, further by, um, as far as I understand, spreading this um, smoothness uh, from the language model throughout different locations in this target sentence, different word locations, um, rather than having the same uh, influence over all word locations, it's kind of spread out. Um, I didn't read this in detail, so I will leave you to check this out on your own in the paper. But so it's a little bit more complicated than this. Um, no, is this? Anyways, I will not go into that. You can check this out. So moving on to some experiments done in this paper. Um, they actually do some experiments on um, four translation tasks. Translation from English to German, German to English, Turkish to English, and English to Turkish. And um, all of those are, I think they are using some low resource datasets here. For evaluation, they're using the blue score where higher is better. And um, they're actually comparing a base system, which is trained only on the parallel dataset without any language model, to some systems which are integrating language model, which are the baseline approaches to integrating language model. You have your shallow fusion, which is a the linear combination during the inference time. You have a few different ones. You have the label smoothing here, LS, um, so the base approach plus label smoothing. And you have your approaches, last three ones, using the language model prior. So it seems that, um, first of all, well, the main competitor seems to be labeled smoothing and the uh, language model prior outperforms labeled smoothing by um, one, one and a half blue points, depending on which task you're looking at. So it seems that the language model prior needs, indeed leads to improved translation performance. And actually the language model prior and labeled smoothing can be combined together, which is shown by this result here. So they're not like, um, competitive in a way, but they could be combined effectively, even leading to some small improvement in overall. So um, the best approach is to combine them actually. And also for one final interesting result is that it seems that training the, on, the language model on more uh, raw data from 3 million sentences in, the, in this approach here to 30 million in the last one so the, more, the bigger training data for the language model doesn't seem to um, lead to big improvement at all uh, in comparison to the baseline train on only 3 million uh, pairs. Or maybe in some, in some uh, tasks from German to English, you get like 7 blue, 0.7 blue points better with a bigger language model. And then finally, what I wanted to cover is how does this depend on the size of your parallel data? Here in this plot, you will be looking at the, we have the, um, on the x-axis, the amount of parallel data used to train a neural machine translation model. And on the y-axis, you have the blue score. We're comparing the base plus label smoothing approach to the base plus language model prior approach. So it seems that, um, consistently independent of whether you're using 10,000 parallel sentences or the full amount of parallel data that you have available, which I think is maybe a couple of million in this plot here. It seems that the language model prior is always effective, um, more effective than the label smoothing method to give you a little bit of a better uh, blue score, a little bit of a boost in performance. So um, yeah, using the language model prior seems to be consistently effective, independent on the amount of parallel training data that you have available. So I think this is the main things that I wanted to cover. Um, and overall, it's a cool approach for integrating a uh, pre-trained language model into the neural machine translation during training. And that is actually a big, big advantage as well of this approach is that um, you don't need to, to load this language model um, in memory when you're doing the inference step like some other strategies meaning that this is just uh, 
training regularization trick, which gives you some extra performance. But during inference, you can use your the same architecture that you had um, as if you didn't have the language model at all to begin with. And then um, finally, one interesting thing that would be cool to see, I think here they're using some uh, standard transformer language models. Actually, it would be very interesting if you can integrate some super huge language models into this process and how will this work out? Like, what if you input a GPT-2 uh, language model? Are you able to get some huge improvements and can you somehow come up with a way to make GPT-2 cooperate with this translation model? That could be very interesting because these super huge language models have been trained on huge amounts of raw data. So you might get some interesting results, not only for translation, but for other type of text-to-text -text rewriting tasks like monolingual tasks, like summarization, for example. That is all. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for some new upcoming NLP videos coming out every week.